won't change. It's not okay to feel not safe in your own school. One month after the Florida school shooting, it's a tragedy that has shaken the otherwise happy and safe community of Parkland, Florida. 17 people were killed. Students around Connecticut. Too many kids have died. Not enough action has been taken. Joining a national movement. We're the stepping stone for a much greater purpose. Walking out of school. Why do we have to march on Washington just to save innocent lives? To send a message. We want to make sure that this never happens again. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our special coverage of the National School Walkout, Sun America Areas. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to all of you. These events are getting underway right now as students here in Connecticut are taking time to honor those who have been lost in school shootings all around the country. Here is a live look at just some of the action. We have schools in Farmington, Guilford, Hartford, and Hamden. In fact, Fox 61 has crews at a half dozen schools just to try to give you a taste of the events that are going on all around the state right now and in the next few minutes. Of course, the Sandy Hook tragedy happened five years ago. It's close to home for many in our state. And the Florida school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School happened exactly one month ago today. Now, these four towns are not only observing today. Organizers have events planned at more than 75 schools all across Connecticut, from Avon to Bridgeport, New London to Wallingford, and many more. And now students said, many of these schools said, they are planning to walk out of school for 17 minutes exactly. That's one minute for each of the 17 people who were killed in the Parkland, Florida school shooting. In fact, you're looking at this right now. Students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas there in Parkland, the scene of that shooting, have joined this national movement as well. In many ways, they are the catalyst of this movement. And the students have said it's another opportunity to call for change and to honor their fallen friends. And this morning's walkout is just one of the many ways the students at Stoneman Douglas have been pushing for more school security and also tougher gun control. Last month, students participated in a town hall event where they came face to face with local lawmakers as well as the NRA. Some students also met with President Trump. Since the shooting, Florida Governor Rick Scott has signed several gun control measures demanded by the students. Now we're also joined now once again by Patrice McCarthy, the Deputy Director and General Counsel of the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. Patrice, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it, it's amazing looking at that, just the masses of humanity. This is a level of coordination from high school students I'm guessing we haven't seen in this country in half of a century at least. I think that's very true. And when you look at the level of student engagement and their desire as young people to make their voices heard, that's a very important part of an educational experience. And I think we should be very proud of them. Now, students planning this, along with educators, administrators here in Connecticut, a lot went into the planning. And this is being done in a very safe manner. Right? That's right. Student safety is a primary concern for school boards and school administrators. And it's wonderful to see the way that they were able to work with students to plan events that are appropriate to yeah. their mm -hmm. school setting. Yeah, and the sophistication is unlike anything we've seen. As you can see here live at Guilford High School, there's a podium, speakers, and signs. Uh, Patrice, we will get back to you in a minute. Again, thank you for being with us here because we're the only local station that is on the air covering these uh, Connecticut uh, demonstrations going on right now. And we do want to start with Margot Farrell. She is at Guilford High School with more on what's happening. Good morning. Tim, Erica, good morning. You can see the crowd behind me. The students have already started gathering outside. I'm going to step out of the frame so you can take a look. Several of them holding up their signs, calling for action from the local level and also the national level. Now, what you're hearing, those cheers, those are several, not only parents, but adults from the community here in Guilford that came out to show support for these students, wanting them to know that they are not alone in this fight, that they, too, are calling for action and hoping that nothing happens like this again, like what we just saw exactly one month ago in Parkland, Florida. Now, as you have been mentioning, this walkout is expected to last 17 minutes, one minute for each of the victims who was lost in that shooting in Parkland, Florida. I spoke with students earlier this morning. They tell me that this is a movement that they are especially impacted by and they feel particularly passionate for. Uh, they want their lawmakers to know that they are demanding action and that even though they're just students, that they want their voice to be heard as well. Woo! We're live in Guilford this morning. I'm Margot Farrell, Fox 61 News.
Sarah, thanks. And we are live in Hartford as well, in the capital city. Hartford Magnet Trinity College Academy. The students are gathering there. They're reading the names of the 17 people who lost their lives in Parkland, Florida. Governor Dana Malloy is there as well. We're going to listen in for a moment. Just looking forward to high school. He was a basketball player who had ambitions about the sport and admired NBA stars like LeBron James and Steph Curry. Luke was a happy kid who had a huge heart. He carried great he cared greatly for his family. Feist, 37, was the assistant football coach and security guard. Feist played football at Douglas and returned in 2002. The kids in the community loved him. He was phenomenal. He selflessly shooted students from the shooter when he was shot. He died a hero and he will forever be in our hearts and memories. Heard them mentioning there, one of the assistant coaches, Aaron Feist, one of the first faces of the shooting in Parkland, Florida. Uh, again, Patrice McCarthy and Erica Arias along with you here. I'm Tim Lammers. Uh, we're going to get you now to Hamden High School. Tony Terzi is live there where the demonstrations have started. Tony, how do things look where you are? Very good, Tim. Uh, behind us, there are some adults who are here out in front of Hamden High School on Dixwell Avenue to show support for the students. And we're joined by a student, a freshman, Ava Kleinman. Ava, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for interviewing me. You bet. Uh, tell me a little bit about what is planned for the students inside the school. Well, right now they're um, walking out of Connections, which is essentially a break period into the gym where our protest is planned. There will be no bags, no hats, no hoods, all that stuff. I've heard there's speakers mm -hmm. and um, some cheers planned, but I can't really verify anything that's actually happening. Now, in terms of, so you don't know what's going on in there. I know some schools are writing letters to their congressmen and congresswomen. Some are writing letters to the families of the victims, signing up students to actually vote so that they can affect change that way. Why have you chosen not to take part in that and come outside? I feel like the part of a, the most important part of a protest is that it's public. And now I understand that there are some safety measures that have to be taken, but I don't think boxing us in and to a gym inside the school where no one can see us is a very effective measure. And also, they're like, it's supposed to be a student voices and students calling for change. And with teachers and principals taking control, like obviously there has, there's going to be some measure of authority, but. The point is, it's a student protest because students are dying, not, and adults aren't doing anything. And Again, this is Ava Kleinman, a freshman here at Hamden High School. Ava, what sort of security do you have in the school every day? Um, we have security guards, and they check our faces if you walk in. Um, this morning, actually, I got stopped because I had a hood on and they couldn't see who I was. So there's some sort of face recognition mechanism? Yeah, but it's only, um, it's human, so of okay. course there's, there may be some error, or you know, uh -huh. yeah. And there's no metal detectors or anything, so. What if there's one, if a legislator or President Trump was here, what would you say to a legislator about one thing that could affect necessary change? Ban assault rifles before I get shot, please. I, I just really like to go to school and learn and not, you know, die. <laughs> that would be great. Like, but seriously, um, I've known people who have had panic attacks. I've had panic attacks. People are deathly afraid of going to school. And it's not just, please ban the gun assault rifles. That's Ava Kleinman. I'm Tony Terzi. We're live outside Hamden High School using her 17 minutes to try to affect change. Back to you, Tim and Erica. Thanks, well, friend. Hamden, we're going to go to Farmington. Aisha Bow is standing by with what's happening there at Farmington High School. Aisha? 
Hey guys, good morning. It's actually kind of hard to hear. As you can hear, the students right now are screaming, protect kids, not gun. Right now we are at Farmington High School. And as you can see, uh, we've got um, quite a couple of dozens of students out here that are chanting right now. Now the students came out here about a couple of minutes ago. Um, we've had about two students address the crowd here. Um, and the main thing they've been saying is enough is enough. And as you can hear, they are chanting, um, hey, hey, NRA. Now, the main thing the kids were saying here is they want to see change. They are hoping that lawmakers are listening and they are hoping that something will come out of this. And as you can see, uh, many of them holding signs here. One of them saying, together we rise, hashtag enough. And again, they are chanting enough is enough. Now, I did go inside earlier um, and spoke with somebody from the administrator. They did give the students an option um, to attend a program inside the school for those who did not walk out. But as you can see, we got a couple of dozen uh, students here that did choose to walk out. And again, we are at Farmington High School where students are participating in the national walkout. Um, that's the latest here from here. I'm going to toss it back to you guys. All right, Aisha, thanks very much. Well, again, we do have Patrice joining us. And I just want to ask you if we can bring you in before we go to another yeah. crew out in the field. What kind of emotion are you feeling seeing all these students who've found their voice, they're taking action, we've seen Hampton, we have seen Farmington, we've seen Hartford? I think it's an incredible day out of terrible tragedy and a series of tragedies for many years around the country affecting students in their school buildings. We now see young people taking the opportunity to affect change, do so in a, a very civic manner so that they are learning great lessons and hopefully their message is being heard by the adults around the country. Now this is a live look at Guilford High School. You can see some of the signs, protect kids, not guns. Tony Terzi talked to a student there at Hamden High School specifically who wanted assault rifles banned. The Farmington, they're chanting specifically at the NRA. So we're seeing a lot of very specific political messaging going on right here. We want to keep you going around the state. Amanda Rouse is at Jonathan Law High School in Milford right now at 1013 during this 17 minutes of silence. Amanda, what's going on there? Well, Tim, I think it's really interesting what Patrice just said about these students wanting to react to violence inside of their schools. Here at Jonathan Law High School, they had violence. Back in 2014, one of their classmates was killed by another classmate. That wasn't gun violence, but it was still school violence. And that has really resonated in the community, in the school community. I want to get out of the way here where you can see it is a somber morning out here as they sit and they reflect about the 17 lives lost in Parkland. In Florida. These students all walked out a little bit before 10 o'clock. They organized themselves. They tried to get their message together themselves. The mayor, the superintendent, they're both here, but they're saying that this is about the students. This is about the students sending out their message. A big message that they wanted to send was to Congress to make sure that Congress acts. They said enough of thoughts and prayers and sending messages. We want to see action. And these students are just gathered here today to send that message to Congress and to the the community. One thing that we did really stress earlier today was student safety. As you can see, um, they're all gathered there right around the flagpole where the flag is at half mast, but they're being very well protected by the Milford Police Department. The department is keeping everyone off of campus. They wanted to make sure that this was a way for the students to be able to safely give their message. So that is what we are seeing live at Jonathan Law High School right now. The students will remain out here for a little bit longer. And as soon as we can get more on their message and talk to the students, we will, of course, bring that to you. Tim, Erica. Amanda, thanks so much. And right now we're looking at live video from Parkland, Florida. They're remembering the 17 people who lost their lives there one month ago. As you can see, not only have they walked out of class, but they are all walking in mass uh, to a location. We don't know exactly where they're planned to walk right now. Uh, it looks like, okay, they are gathering. Again, we're watching this video just as you are. And they, too, a lot of them holding signs up that we can't quite see what they are. But the Parkland High School uh, community there, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School community, as we said before, really sort of kicked this off with their outspokenness and their activism that has led to what we are seeing now. 
uh, as more than 75 different school districts across Connecticut alone have something planned for today. That also includes Manchester High School, which instead of a walk out, staged a walk in before class because they wanted to make sure that the school day would not be disrupted but still show their activism and that's sort of illustrating that we're seeing a lot of different tactics being undertaken uh, at different school districts. And right now we're heading to West Hartford. Esther Catra was standing by showing us what is happening at Connard High School right now. Esther. That's right, we are here at Connard High School. We're on the sidewalk because we can't be on school property, but just past these parents is where all the students have gathered. And I'm joined here by two parents. One of them, Chris, your daughter actually organized this walk out here today for the high school. Walk us through, you know, why do you have these signs here and what does it mean for you to be out here today? I'm proud as can be. The youth have taken control. They're going to say enough is enough because they're done with it. They're done with the fact that these, these guns are in the schools or trying to get into the schools, and there's certain guns that don't belong on the streets at all. And Ariella, same question goes to you. You also have kids who go to school here in the West Hartford School District. Why are you out here today? Well, my kids are young. They're in kindergarten and then a two-year-old, and they participate in regular trainings and, uh, for lockdowns. And I just, I firmly believe that it's not the job of small children to prepare for their own massacres. And how do you feel as parents being out here specifically? I'm happy to support. I wish there were more people here to support these kids. But it's very important and I'm proud of them. And I'll step out of the shot. What do your signs say? Our signs say that we support our youth. And it is important that we're out here to show the youth that we're right, right by their side. Well, thank you, parents, for joining us out here this morning. We appreciate your time. And again, we are live here outside of Connard High School in West Hartford, where the students are standing outside for 17 minutes, one minute for each victim in the Florida shooting. I'm reporting live here in West Hartford, Esther Catrell, Fox 61 News. All right, Esther, thanks. Well, you know, just a few minutes ago, before we headed out to Esther in West Hartford, we were seeing the mm -hmm. sea of students in Parkland, Florida. Certainly that shooting that happened one month ago today spurred this movement. But we have to go back to what happened at Sandy Hook. That changed us, not just here in Connecticut, but that really woke up the entire nation. Right, Patrice? It, it did, absolutely. And the concern that we all have for the safety of our students is not just a one-day event. This is an ongoing activity in Connecticut. We have made great progress in making sure that we have a school climate that, we, that is supportive of our students, that we've adopted security measures, that in Connecticut we've taken steps on gun control and trying to address the mental health needs of our young people. But all those issues, we haven't completed the task yet in Connecticut or around the country. More work needs to be done, and I think these student voices today are a very strong reminder to all of the adults that that work is important and must continue. In your opinion, what do you think needs to happen that has not? We need clearly more mental health services for young people. We also need better gun control so that we don't have assault weapons that are available and being used in our schools. Uh, yeah, no, it's interesting. Uh, being that you're representing the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education, you're in, you're very interested in the context of these protests, but you're also sort of looking at it mechanically because you need to make sure that students are staying safe. Uh, what are you seeing based on just what you've looked at along with us over the past 19 minutes about how these protests are playing out? It looks to me like the careful planning that has gone into place over the past several weeks is really being demonstrated today in what looks like very peaceful but meaningful messages mm -hmm. and allowing students to convey their message in their own voice while at the same time making sure that they are kept safe mm -hmm. because that is a primary responsibility of the educators and the school board members. Yeah. Well, right now we're going to go back to Hartford. Governor Dana Malloy is speaking right now in the capital city. Theaters and our restaurants and our ch churches safer. There is a way to do it. People sitting in Washington know how to do it, but they're afraid to do it because of the pressure from other groups. This day marks a change here in Hartford, across our nation, as students who will, in fact, be voters in the near future, stand up and, and demand change. Don't forget this day. Don't forget the lives that were sacrificed to bring this day about. Let us commit ourselves to change. Thank you. I 
would now like to invite Mayor Luke Bronin. Good morning, HMTCA. Good morning. To all of the students here today, to the students that have spoken this morning, and to the organizers, uh, including Maggie and uh, Alexa and Larnie and Essence, uh, you are inspiring to all of us. It is incredible to see you out this morning, standing together to raise your voices for a change that's long, long overdue. I want to say thank you to the superintendent and the Board of Education and Principal Biggs and uh, to Governor Malloy and everyone who's here for taking the approach of supporting you as you raise your voices, not suppressing your speech as some districts around the country have done. What you guys are calling for is just common sense, and we stand with you. And that is Mayor Luke Brown, and again, speaking in Hartford, you can see students behind him with the names of the Parkland victims. Uh, let's get now to Tony Terzi. He's at Hamden High School, where the protests have been going on for some time now. Tony. At Parkland or at Sandy Hook. Or Here outside Hamden High School, um, very active parent and grandparent group, and we're pleased to be joined by Ellen Schreier, who is not only a teacher herself, but she is also a parent of an 11th grade student here at Hamden High School. Your perspective from a teacher and a parent, Ellen? Uh, well, today is a very special day because we want to remember all the victims of gun violence at schools. And uh, particularly, you know, means a lot to me because my son is a high school student here. My other son is in middle school in Hamden. And I feel every day when I send them off to school, pray to God that they're safe because of the proliferation of guns in our society. It has to be put under control or else we're going to continue to have these sad walking around with signs and reckonings of uh, school violence. So now, Ellen, what do, what do you say to people who would say, well, you know what, it's people that kill people. It's not guns that kill people. Uh, I think that if they didn't have access to guns, then it wouldn't happen with as much regularity and with as much um, a great number of loss of life. Explain to me from a teacher's perspective, you talked about hoping your children are safe going to school, but do you feel safe? Not always, because I don't think a school building can be entirely safe. There's no 100% solution mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, and in our school, it's kind of an older building, and, you know, I'm sure that there are points of access right. that I don't even know about. And sure. so I have to think about when we have lockdown drills, you know, this could be my last moments on earth in this closet. So That's Ellen Schreier. Uh, we're live outside Hamden High School again. She's a teacher in New Haven. She has a student here at Hamden High School. We'll send it back to Hartford. All right, Tony, thanks. And right now we're checking in once again with Margot Farrell. She's live at Guilford High School. Erica, thank you. Now, you know, this was particularly inspiring to see the children come out marching and, and protesting peacefully. But what happened here in Guilford High School was it wasn't just the students who were taking part in this movement. It was also some parents and some adults from the Guilford community. I have some of them here with me now. Can you tell me why you felt it was important to come out here today? Well, I felt it was a very American activity, peaceful protest, and it's a, a remarkable civics lesson. But other than that, these kids understand what's in jeopardy and they understand they have a voice and it's valuable in the community and that makes me feel so proud and they know it means the future and they right now are the future we don't have to wait I know you were telling me you have children, but they're not actually at Guilford High School, but you still felt it was important to come here today. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to show these students that they have our support, to hear them across the way chanting and shouting, enough is enough, to hear our students and our children telling us that was a really, really powerful moment that I'll keep with me forever. And, and speaking of that powerful moment, I noticed several of you getting very emotional as the kids were coming out and marching towards you. What was going through your mind? Oh, God, so much. I mean, it's it's great to see that they have found their voice. Um, I mean, my son is in preschool, and, you know, the only way I can teach him about, you know, his civil liberties is through books, and I've read him the book Let the Children March. Um, it's a great book for, you know, kids his age to understand, you know, that they have some power, that they can make a change. 
Well, we appreciate you guys taking the time to chat with us. Uh, that's just the very latest here in Guilford. But as you saw from our special team coverage all this morning long, this is happening not only here in Guilford, but at other schools all across the state, as well as all across the country. And Fox 61 will continue to keep you updated as this movement goes forward. We're live in Guilford this morning. I'm Margo Farrell, Fox 61 News. Right out to Hartford, Keith McGilvery as Governor Malloy. Tim and Erica here, yes, with Governor Malloy. Governor, thank you so much for your time this morning. A powerful display from these students. What did you take away from this? Well, I, I, students are great. Um, I, I think the future of America is, is great because of these students and for them to take this stand and, and to remind us as adults that we're not doing our job to make them safe, to make our nation safe, to make our streets of Hartford uh, safe. So I, this is a moving experience for them, for me, uh, for anyone who's participated. You heard these young people call for real, tangible change. What can you tell them about the likelihood of that happening? What's your message on that front? Well, as I said in my comments, I, you know, Washington knows how to change this. I mean, universal background checks, banning uh, these assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, as we've done in Connecticut, um, uh, actually leads uh, to safer communities. Uh, but they're afraid. Uh, they're afraid of the NRA. They're afraid of uh, uh, criticism. They're afraid of losing elections. They're more afraid of losing elections than they are of losing children, which is quite remarkable. So how do we get the ball moving here? I know in Connecticut, a lot of folks have been on the forefront of this issue. How do we take that conversation to other parts of the country? I, I, you know, I said this two days after Sandy Hook, that, that uh, shootings like Sandy Hook are coming to your neighborhood, to your town, your state. Um, and unfortunately, I, I was right. Uh, our nation will not and has not yet addressed this issue. Um, but more people will probably die. There'll be more shootings in uh, public places, uh, as we saw in Nevada. Uh, and um, those happenings, those events, and then quite frankly, young people responding to them will make the change eventually. Yeah, oftentimes our young people lead these types of social movements. How has this been different for you, do you think? Uh, I've never seen a movement quite like this one, uh, where students are sustaining uh, the efforts uh, of failing adults. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think it's quite remarkable, and I just wanted to be here to see it myself. Governor Malloy, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Tim and Erica, certainly a power Powerful morning out here in Hartford. Hundreds of students turning out to make sure that their voices were heard. Along with the governor, you saw Hartford Mayor Luke Bronin, as well as a number of students, uh, take to the podium there to really call for action uh, across the country. For now, Keith McGilvery, live in Hartford, Fox 61 News. Keith, thank you. And from Hartford, we're going back down to Milford. Amanda Rouse is standing by with one of the student organizers there. Amanda? That's right. We actually have a couple of the student organizers here at Jonathan Law High School. And ladies, thanks so much for joining us. Quickly, just run down your names for me. Colleen Hugo. Grace Baselli. Salma Sammy. Now, why did you ladies decide to take part in this national walkout today? We've grown up in an environment where gun shootings are almost a norm in schools. So now that it's happened to people our age and at such a large scale, we felt really passionate to be able to stand up and like say our message, what we want to change. Mm -hmm. What is that message? Um, we feel that the current gun laws are not strict enough, and uh, we feel very strongly about that, and we want that to change in our lifetime. Is this your way, as you watched, I'm sure as you did, after the Parkland school shooting, you saw your like fellow classmates in Parkland go and lobby their legislators in Florida. And so there was some, I would say, you know, some disappointment and, and some, you know, people getting upset that their voice wasn't heard. Is this your way of also making sure that you're not only standing with them, but telling Connecticut lawmakers, hey, we're expecting more from you? Yes, absolutely. I feel that the more schools that participate in this, the louder the message will be spoken. And we definitely wanted to help uh, strengthen that. So. Another thing that I noticed, you know, since we were across the street, is that the flag was lowered to half mast as well and half staff. Um, was that something that you guys had originally said, hey, let's do this to honor the 17 lives lost? Yeah, as well as some of the victims were ROTC members, so they were involved in the military and some order some organizations like that. So we wanted to honor them that way as well. All right. Well, thank you ladies so much for participating and for t speaking to us and letting us know what the message was today. We really appreciate it. Erica and Tim, we'll send it back over to you.
Thank you. Once again, we're, we're joined by uh, Patrice McCarthy from the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. Uh, you've talked a lot about uh, the board stance or the association stance. Looking at what's happened out there, the uh, initiative is very admirable. The passion is undeniable. I'm sure, though, looking at this from the other side, there's a lot of very well-reasoned, well-intentioned people out there who are seeing this problem of school shootings and mass shootings as a very complex problem, and they're saying, oh, no, here we go again. This is very quickly being distilled solely into a referendum about semi-automatic rifles. You've made your stance on that, too, that you feel that there should be some gun control, but what else is your association feeling that needs to be taken care of? Because this is probably a multifaceted problem with multifaceted solutions. It, it absolutely is. And I think that the issues of mental health services, particularly for young people, which are not that available, the professionals are in very short supply that can support our young people with mental health needs, as well as just looking at overall school climate and making sure that all of our students, that they feel supported, that they feel cared for, while they are in the school setting. But clearly the issue of guns and the violence that is created by guns is an important part of the conversation. And I think those student voices that you heard so clearly this morning, that that message is going to continue because as you said, their passion, their commitment will not subside at the end of the school day today. Well, Patricia, thank you so much. We do appreciate your time and joining us here for our special coverage of what happened today. Of course, we're going to have much more coming up in the news at 4 and 5 for you, so be sure to tune in there, as well as 10 and 11. You can always get recaps as well on our website. Yes, have a great morning, everybody.